Hey, I'm Rehana. In this video, I'm gonna talk about flow with retrofit. So, let's start. In some previous uh, video, we discussed about fundamental of flow API and also using it in uh, Roam database in Kotlin. I will put all the link in the description. So here in this project, I want to show you how we can use flow with retrofit in the best way. As always here, I have a new project and uh, the first step, I should add some dependencies. So please add these dependency here in build gradle app level file. You can get this uh, dependency from git repo that I will put the link in the description. I want to use a uh, navigation component, coroutine, lifecycle, and also retrofit, coil. And uh, I want to use uh, this library for showing chart and as well this library. And I will tell you why I need to use uh, this library. Uh, this library is for uh, removing some HTML and CSS code inside of the response that you get from the API. So just let me update this library into last version. Okay, this one as well. Good. I think, yeah, just this one. Just need to mention uh, before adding this dependency, I just added this uh, viewpointing here. And also I need to add some plugin. Yes, here. And also some clavpad into build gradle module level here before plugin. Yes. And now we can sync our project. Yes, all the thing here in this step is done. So let's continue and work with uh, XML. In this uh, video, I don't want to focus on UI part. So let me just copy and paste the basic of the UI template that I use in the application. And also you can get this XML code on the repo. So here, uh, let me create uh, the XML for our item. Good. And also uh, for this video, uh, just I want to create the home fragment and uh, the next video, we will work on details fragment. So here just need to add our home fragment. Yes, I want this one and here just need to change into home fragment okay and also here I can delete this unnecessary code yes and as well this part great so let me copy and paste some uh, UI for uh, this XML file. First, I want to add code into my item. So, okay, all the things seems good. Just, I guess there is two error. Let me check. Okay, this one. And the other one is this one. Let me create this uh, background round and also add this style into our Tem XML. For this error, just let me create the XML here. I don't need to have a selector, just here I want to have a shape. Okay, inside the tag shape, I can add uh, a color solid Android color. Good. And here 
I can put my color. Just let me create the namespace. Good. And the color that I want to use here is uh, somehow is gray. Yes, somehow is dark gray. And as well, I want to set a corner. Yes, radius. Here I can put 20 dp. I think can be good. And it should be fixed for this one. Yes, and let's create uh, this style here for having circle image for this view. For that purpose, just need to come here into XML and inside the resource tag just need to call a style and put circle image and here just put an item corner size yes this one and here I can put uh, the percentage of the corner size. So here I just want to add 50%. All the thing here is done. Just let's back. And yes, this error as well is gone. As you can see, apply into my view. So far, so good. Let's continue to add container into my main activity okay here i can put fragment yes and set constraint parent button button Parent and the last constraint is end end. Just need to create our nav graph. So let me do it here. Navigation and here you can put the name, everything that you want. I choose this name, for example, and here just a need at our fragments. So now I just have one fragment. So just add this one here and it's done. Back into main activity and continue to add our navigation. should use app for this one okay and here just need call our navigation main nav yes this one and the other things here I should to add is name yes this one and I need to call Android X dot navigation dot fragment and the last part is nav host fragment good and the other things that I should add here is default nav host so let me do that default nav host it should be true okay all the thing here done just let me check okay i work here into 
the main activity XML is done, just need to add a recycler review and uh, progress bar here into our home fragment. So let me do it here. Just I can delete all the things and add recycler review. Here I can put the zero dp because I want to set constraint. Okay, good and okay. Let me change it into constraint layout. Yes, now it's better and now. I can set my constraint parent start to start of parent good and the last one is bottom bottom of parent good and the last things that I want to have here is about progress bar I just want to show progress bar before loading my data. So good. It can be a wrap content as well for height. I can set ID here. Progress bar loading is good. And set constraint sort of start. Parents parent. and uh, the last thing is a bottom bottom of parent. This is done. Okay. Our main activity as well is done. Let's continue to creating some package for having clean structure. Uh, in our project so as always uh, the first one is for our adapter the second one is for API and our dependency injection oh, sorry I chose the wrong one Yes, and uh, for our repository, okay, and the next one can be for our response, and the other one can be can be for our UI. Good and uh, as well, we need another one for our utils, and the last one can be for our view models. View model. Good. The next step, I should create my response class. How? For this uh, tutorial, I want to use a uh, coin geeko if I'm not mistaken about the pronounce of this site, I want to use this API. I will put the link of this API in the description of the video so you can uh, use it and read this document. For getting the list of all coin, I want to use this request here. As you can see, I should put the currency here. For example, we can use Euro. And then there is a lot of option. You can use it, for example, pagination, uh, a sparkline that we use for showing uh, the chart in our application. So let's show you how it's work. Here I put euro and here I put true and then execute. Okay. Here is the link of a request and copy, paste it here 
and see the response. If you know nothing about how to work with response and how it can be created, I will put about our complete tutorial about working with the retrofit. So please see that video first, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the seven steps of that video. I totally explain about working with the response and how it can be created in Android Studio. So here, just let me copy all this response and back into Android Studio and in the response package. Always I use this plugin in Android Studio for creating a response. So select this one and paste your response here. You can use the format button for reformat your response like this. And here just you can put every name that you want. Response coins list for example and then the last thing just need click on the generate button and here as you can see our response is created with all data that i need to work with that this step is done the next step i want to create my api class series here as an interface so choose interface and put a name, for example, API service. And here, uh, as you can see here in the document, the document told us I should use the get method. So let's back and use get annotation here. Yes, this one from the retrofit library and then here i should put my path so how we can uh, recognize the path here you just need to know this part is your path and here this part is your base URL. I will create another class uh, for saving my base URL and just call it from that class. Uh, just for now, uh, remember this part is your path and the other parameters uh, you see here is your query parameters. So let's back into Android Studio and I guess I forgot to copy this part. Yes. And back into Android Studio and paste it here. As I said before, I want to use with chart. So just let me copy this part into my path part as well. Sorry, I don't need to add sign here. Just this one. And back into Android Studio and put question mark and then pass to your query. Let's continue. Here I want to have my function as a suspend function. And here we can put your name, get coins, list, for example. And here. That's uh, the query told us the VS currency is required. So there is two options you can put here or you can put it here and uh, user can work with different uh, currency. So I prefer to put it here as a query parameter. So just need to call query annotation and put the exact name copy and back into android studio and paste it here and here just define the variable for that and this one as a response 
from retrofit yes and here we can pass your response class this one just let me yes this one okay this name and this name should be same good our work here is done the next step is about creating our dependency for working with the retrofit before we had a complete video about uh, working with hilt and retrofit so please see that video first if you do not have information enough about working with hilt and retrofit so here i just want to create a class as object api module good and let me just uh, paste those punch of code here i paste all the code here as i mentioned before please uh, see that video first and back to continue watching this video so just uh, let me to fix all the error in this class as well this one for yes is done uh, this variable it's come from our constants class so let me create okay this class can be as an object good in this class uh, just let me create two variable uh, the first one is our base URL and the second one is for network timeout so uh, let me create a console as a base URL and put the base URL link here. Okay, just let me check. Okay, I can put it here like this good and the other one is for network timeout timeout it can be 16 milliseconds good and let's back into api module and import this one and as well i should import this one so let's continue and create our repository class that's important in this video here we can call it api repository good the repository class provides information for me and it need uh, to inject API service here in the constructor to define this function here. Uh, let me show you how it's work. Inject constructor and private well. We can call it as API service, yes. And here, the first function in this video, I want to work with the get coin list. So again, I want to have this function as a suspend function. So get coin list. And as you know, here we passed the currency so let me copy and paste it here good and now I want to use flow here the first thing here I want to emit loading let's do it emit Okay, here I need to create another class that's uh, here we call data status. 
data status object contain information such as loading a success or error states of our data so uh, let me create it here in our utils package this class should be as a data class and here it should be as rt and there is some uh, status for handle so the first parameter here it should status from status we will create this status letter okay and the second one is our data it should be as a generic type and also it can be no and the last one is for our message as a string this one as well can be no good and let's create this status as an enum class and here you can create your situation uh, in this project we have three situation loading or success and the last one if we faced error okay good and here I need to have companion object and inside this companion object I should create three methods for each of them actually for handling uh, each situation so the first one is loading so from data status it should be from our class and just that and it should just return a data class sorry a status dot loading and for the second one if all the thing goes well and uh, here I have access to data so uh, that means as a success situation and here there is my data and it should uh, yeah and it should return data status and here just need return data status status dot success and data let me check why I have an error here Oh, okay I forgot put error is gone and again for the last one is the error part so if I face with the error here I can access to the error message so as a string and like the other function here I need to call status and here just need a return data status status dot error and also I can pass message of the error here cool all the thing here is done let's back into our repository to complete this function so here as I said mentioned before 
I first I want to emit loading. Okay, data status dot loading. And here I want to call my request and put it the result of that call here in the result variable. So call API service dot get kindlies and just here need to pass this parameter here. And guys here I can handle my situation. The reason for handling the follow in this way is to provide a more robust and flexible way of handling data fetching in our application. By using flow you can easily switch between different data sources or implement caching strategies without modifying uh, the calling code. Additionally, flow allows for easy to transformation and manipulation of data, making it ideal for use in the reactive programming model. So here in this when structure, I can handle the result code of my response calling. Let's continue. Yes, here like that. If the result code is 200, that means all thing is good and I have access to my response. But the other situation, you can handle it with the message. For example, for 400 uh, error or for 500 error, just like that. Okay, uh, let me show you how it's work. Again, need call emit. And here call data status dot call success and here just need pass the result of body. Okay. And the second one is emit. This one and this one that means I faced with the error. So I can call here sorry data status dot dot error and here inside of the error I just can pass the result of the message the same things happen for the other error okay here I can put the catch as I mentioned in the previous video about fundamental flow, I explained with catch you can handle other error when you work with flow. So I can put it here and I can for example oh here this is yeah. Here I can just emit again call my data status dot error and here eat that message dot to a string the other advantages of working with follow you can manage that your follow work in which dispatchers and it's a good thing to work with the follow you can just call follow on and here you can for example patchers yes this one from coroutines you can handle which follow work on which uh, scope here I want to use IO overall using a follow in this way provides a more scalable and maintainable way of handling data fetching in our application. So far so good. The next step is uh, working with our view model. So let's create our view model class here. 
we can call it main view model. Okay, good. The first thing here, I should put the hilt annotation of view model. Good. And then here, I need to call inject and use constructor and pass my repository here. Private val. Yes, this one. Repository. Uh, the purpose of using a view model is divide our business logic from UI logic. So let's continue to create two different variable. Uh, the purpose of this is encapsulate our variable. So uh, the first one is for using internal and the second one is used for inside our activity, inside our fragments. So private example coin list it should be multiple I forgot to put well here, yes. Multiple live data. Let me Yes guys, this one. We need to use mutable live data as an internal variable and then call our data status class here and pass lease. And the last one is about our response. So response, yes, this one. Good. And now it's time to create our external version of this variable. For example, con list, it should be as a live data and then call here uh, data status and then call list and the last step call our item list from the response. Good. And then here just need to pass get from the internal version. The last step here, just I need to create a function. Get coin list. Good. And as you know, here there is a parameter. So just let me, yes. So I need to have this parameter here as well. Okay, now here I just need to call a view model. Oh, okay. Here I forgot to extend our class from the view model. Yes, and because of that, I didn't access to view model scope here. Yes, as you can see here now, I have access to view model scope, and so that launch good inside of this view model scope just need to call my repository that get count list and pass this parameter here and here i can collect my data so just need like that and call my internal variable and call value and pass it here. Cool. Everything here is done. Let's continue to create our adapter and then work with uh, home fragments. For creating our adapter, we need to take three steps. The first one is create view holder, implement adapter member, and then create the util call back. Okay, let's create our adapter here into adapter package. I put this name crypto adapter. You can put every name that you want. 
So first here, I want to call inject with blank constructor. And now I should extend this class from recycler view, yes, that adapter. Okay, and just here, I should create my view holder that good let's create this view holder class here as the inner class and it should extend from that view holder So here, as always, we should implement some member. Let's do it and rearrange my function and class. Now it's better. The first thing that I want to have here is our binding. So private let me to var binding. It's from item binding. Yes, this one. And then here in uncreate view holder class, just let me create some variable inflator, yes, this one, and past layout inflator dot from past parent dot context. Good. And as well for my binding, that item binding that inflate, just need to pass inflator, parent, and the last one should be false. And here just need to return my view holder. Here is done. And here I should to do is creating my differ callback. So let's create private val differ callback object from a diff util that item callback and here I should pass my item list so from the response this one guys good okay and here as you can see I should implement some members and here just need to return old item id that id equal with new item dot id the same thing with the a small difference for the second method as well in this method just we need to check whole old item with a new item good and the last step I just need to have a differ for async links differ okay just need to call async list differ yes this one pass this and the second parameter just need to call our variable differ callback here. Good. Let's back into get item counts as complete this function as well. Here, just we need to. Okay. Here, just we need to call our differ and pass the size of current list good let's create and complete this part 
So here just need to pass our binding dot root. Okay, good. And here we can have a function. We can call it as a bind and need to pass item from our response. This one, yes. Okay, now here inside this function, I have access to response and I can attach this response into my view. So uh, let me do it. Need to call binding dot apply and now tv name dot text item dot id yes tv price dot text okay here i just want to use uh, the euro symbol so let me copy and paste it okay now I can access into that field about price. So just need call item dot price current price actually. Yes, this one. Uh, just guys, uh, I recommended to round uh, these double variable because uh, as I saw before, there is a lot of number so let me create some extension function for round these uh, decimal number here in the utils package i can have another class that's called extension good here i just want to have two pattern and then I can create a uh, two extension function with two decimal or a three decimal. So private val format one, for example, can be decimal format. Yes, this one. And here you can put your pattern like this with two decimal number and the other one. Let me change it the related name format two and here format three with three decimal number. So and it's and the next and let's create the extension function for using this parent pattern double round to two decimals the result should be format two dot format pass this and then it can be used as a string and duplicate this one and just change round uh, two actually yes and here just need to call format three Yes, all the thing here is good. Just let me copy the name back into crypto adapter and call it here. The next step is for the symbol. So TV symbol dot takes and just here need to call item dot symbol and just i want to use this symbol as uppercase i can call the uppercase function for a string here all 
also we have two other things. The first thing is related to the image of each crypto or coin. And the second one is about the line chart. So let's first work with the image crypto. Just load and here just need pass item dot image. And we can uh, put some other stuff here like crossfade, like placeholder, like error. So just let's add uh, some drawable here. Yes, it, this one is good. And here, first, I want to enable the crossfade and then I can pass the number for a duration of the crossfade for this image view. And then I can put the placeholder or that variable dot Bitcoin, just let me add. And also, I can handle the error again with the error attributes for the coil library. Drawable dot, again, I can use a Bitcoin icon here as well. Okay, let's go and work with our line chart. There is a small uh, note here I should mention. The library that I used for showing our data and chart just accept the pair of a string and float. And the response for this chart that came from the API is double. So I should convert this data into a string float. So here I need to write the extension function for this uh, convert. Okay, let me do it here. Here just need create another function with the list of double. And also let check nullable. I want to use the name something like that double to float without a space actually okay and this function should return the least of pair a string and float okay and it should return as a map and uh, yes and here I need to have two variable the first one is uh, to convert into float and second one it should be a string so if it's used for float, I just can call it dot to float good. And the other one can be s as a string, for example, it dot to a string. And just here need call pair as it is and f okay let's check yes all the thing is good just let me change it to capital word yeah and back here into the adapter and work with our chart the first thing for working with our chart is set uh, the gradient color so gradient field color can be in array of two color. 
the first one is can be color yes I can use uh, here directly cut of the color to a nine zero eight five for example and the second one can be transparent oh I forgot to put color yes but transparent good okay and also we can set the animation for our chart so let me do it animation that duration okay let me create accounts for this one as well counts now like this and it can be, for example, just let's copy this one and back into our adapter. Just need to import. Okay, good. Let's continue. Now, I should handle my data in the list. How we can do it? I just uh, use the variable for example, list data and call my item dot this one. Uh, this field has a data that I want to show uh, in the chart. So dot price. And now it's time to call our extension function to double to float exactly this one and then the last step here i just need to call my chart and call animate and pass this list of data here here our work is done with the chart there is just one last step here we didn't complete unbind view holder so let's do it holder dot call bind and here i should pass my differ dot current list and then here pass position okay and just set sorry Bill. okay here just we can pass here false our work here is done so let's go to home fragments and work with this fragment here just create binding with our underline binding yes this one okay as you know and private well binding that get underline binding and also here in this part i can define my view model and also my adapter so let's do it private well uh, view model from main main view model by view model let me change it yes and also I can inject my adapter let me it's a var uh, crypto adapter yes all the thing here is good just uh, let's some step for my binding here binding that fragment inflate and past loads inflator and here 
just need to return binding dot root. Let's create unview created method here. Okay. The first thing here that I should to do is set up my recycler view. So set up recycler view. What exactly I want to do here in this function? Let me show you. Here just I want to call binding that I guess I didn't put ID for my recycler view. Yes. ID RV crypto, for example. Copy this ID, paste it here. And also, uh, here always I use uh, the extension function for handling my recycler view. So let's create this extension function together here in this project. Here function just need to call recycler view and call in it color view good and here I can pass my load manager and my adapter so let's do it load manager as a Yes, from this one. And the second one is about adapter. So, yes, this one, guys. And just here, need put star. Okay, good. First, here I can pass the adapter. Yes. And here, I can pass my load manager. Good. Let's back into our fragment and use this function here. Okay. The first one is just need to pass what load manager that you want. Here I want just uh, to use linear load manager. So just need to pass this one and pass require context here and the second parameter is our adapter crypto adapter all the thing here is done let's back here and continue to call a request and handle our adapter with the success data and manage loading and the other things so here i just call to lifecycle scope dot launch and here inside this lifecycle scope i just want to work with my binding and now it's time to call my view model uh, view model dot get cone list and here you can pass your parameter for example here I want to pass the euro. And the next step, I can work with my response. So call coin list dot observer. And we need just pass our lifecycle owner. Here is view lifecycle owner. Okay, good. And now it's time to work with our data status. How with this it dot status? And here we have three different status: data status dot status dot 
loading at the other one data status that is status that succeeds and the last one when we face the error data status dot status dot error let's handle all this situation for loading i want to show loading and i want to invisible my uh recycler view how we can do it in the several projects in the channel i used extension function about handling both situation showing one view and hiding another view how we can do it let me show you and write with you another extension function here function is visible I forgot to add view here, yes. And here I should pass two parameters. The first one is for loading and the second one is a view. Is show a loading, just let me, yes, this one is better. The first one it should be as a boolean and the second one is container say container it should be as a view okay and here there's a simple if is show loading is true that means i want to show my this view that refers into this view so just to call this and work with visibility here view dot visible and my container should be gone or invisible it depends on you and uh, what exactly you need to do in your project so view dot here i want to gun it and if is show loading is false so it should be changed this part it should be gone and the second one should be visible oh sorry okay now let's back into home fragments and here call my progress bar yes this one and call our extension function yes this one the first one true and rv crypto just that guys and for other situation as well just need to pass false and in the error part i can show a toast message here just need to pass record contents it's wrong there's something wrong like that and here that means all the things goes well and here i have access into my data so just need call my crypto adapter and uh, call differ and call submit list it dot data contain my the list of com it seems all the thing is done so just guys let me complete yes i forgot to add some code here so let me uh complete as well this part private underline well underline binding as a uh, 
yes, this one. And here, and be no. Okay, private val binding get underline binding. Good. Here we just need to find our navigation control letter associated with uh, our fragment container view in the current activity. So. Uh, the first thing here I need to do to create uh, the variable. So private uh, latinate var nav controller. Yes, this one. And then let me work with binding here. Activity binding inflate has load inflator. And here, just need to binding dot root. Cool. And here, just need to call nav controller. Find nav controller or dot id dot. Let me check into a main activity. Oh, I forgot to set an ID. ID, it can be fragment container view, for example. Okay, let me copy and paste it here. Good. Val or configuration. Yes, this one. And call. Here just we create an instance from app or configuration. If we move into our other fragments, just title change with the name of each fragment. So here just need call app bar configuration and call set off and here we just have for now is the one fragment so just pass this one and the last thing is here just call uh, setup action bar with the nav controller and pass nav controller and app bar configuration yes this one and just the last things here i just want to call on support navigation up yes this one i want to check the other situation with nav controller that navigate up Okay, all the thing here is done. Just let me make it null my binding uh, on the on destroy of the activity. On destroy, good. And just need call unbinding. No, all the things is done for this video. Just let me check. The first thing I forgot to move these fragments and activity into UI package. Yeah, now it's better. Just let me check. I guess I didn't know this part. Yes, I didn't know. And this right view binding. No. Guys, I forgot to create uh, my app class and add into Android manifest. So uh, let me do it now. Okay, here. My app. And it should extend from application. And also here we should add health. Android app and also here 
I should define it into my manifest file here. Yes. The other things I should to add here is about internet permission. So uh, let me Android uh, internet. Yes, this one. So it seems uh, the code for first page is done. So let's run the application and see the result. I got the error. So let me check. Okay, there's something wrong in my API module the base URL is okay. oh here uh, I did a mistake so this variable should not be a string so here yes now is right so let's run it again and before that let me check okay yes it's crash why because here we should add android entry point annotation for hits for our main activity and as well for our home now let's run again yeah now it's work the chart the name, the symbol, the price, and actually uh, the picture of each coin. Here, our work is done for this video. Uh, if you are new in the channel, please subscribe my channel, like my video, and also write a comment for me. If you want to learn specific things in Android, please let me know. I will try to record the video for you. See you soon in the next video. Uh, in the next video, I will show you how we can click on each item and go to details, fragments, and see the details of each coin.